A jar file? What the heck is a jar file? Well, it looks like a real DHL email. Hmm, it's got logos, it's got addresses, it looks fairly real. Maybe I should open it. Maybe I should see what's in this jar file. Hmm. Do you want to know what's in a jar file? Do you want to see how to pull it apart? Well, stay tuned. So here we have an email and attached to this email is this jar file. It's come from office at dhl.com.au, looks pretty legit, mm, got all the logos, it's got an address, got return, everything on there, got photos, got a little confidentiality notice, mm, looks pretty real, but I would never ever expect a jar file as an attachment to an email. So let's pull this apart and see what it does. Downloading that file, here we go, it's a Java file. Now this is actually a Java archive file, so it contains other files within it. So I'm going to just simply rename it to .zip, and I'm going to open it then with my favorite zip program, happens to be WinRAR. So we're going to extract out all the contents of this file. Inside that is a definition information file, which we can open with any text editor. I'm using Notepad++, and here we go. It just tells you the sort of classes and things that are in this file. So if we actually have a look at those class files, which by the way are all binary files generated from the raw Java code. So here we have all the class files within that archive. If we have a look inside those, again with Notepad++, it's not something you can read. You can tell quite quickly that it's Java, but you can't really tell what it does and how it's going to work. You can scroll through it, you can see it includes other classes, you can see some declarations in there, but there's not a lot you can actually tell about this Java, Java file. So let's not worry about that. Let's go to jd.bnow.ca and download a Java decompiler. We need to pull these class files apart. They've got a great tool here, jd-gui, which you can download and then you can decompile your Java files. So let's download it, in my case for Windows great little tool so download this tool and you'll be able to open all the mysteries of the class files here we go so we've opened up the Java decompiler now what we need to do is I just make this a bit bigger so you can all see it and put it in the right spot. Let's go and open up some of these class files. I'm just going to randomly pick one. This name looks good enough. I'm going to open that up and there it is decompiled for us as we go. So we can now scroll through and look at each class file one at a time and work out what they do. Obviously there's going to be some ossification in here. They don't want us to know what these things do but it is in clear text and you can actually go through and spend the time to figure out what everything does. It's quite uh, easy to read and if you understand Java, you can pick up on it pretty quick and work out what it's doing. Now, personally, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna upload it to VirusTotal. So up to virustotal.com and here we go, it's been detected. Scrolling through it, it knows it's a zip file, it knows it's a jar file, it knows it contains other stuff. You can see in here that there's not many people who submitted this yet. It's picked up on the manifest, it's picked up on the 63 files that are within it. Um, it knows that 32 are binary and 30 are class files. And it also knows what's in the packages and what it's using. 
At this point though, I'm not getting a lot of feedback as to what this thing actually does. If we go across to relations, we can actually have a look at this jar file and the 18 relationships it's got. But that's just going to show me that it's a zip file and contains contents. And unfortunately for me, there's nothing on the community page. So I'm going to go to the hybrid analysis. Yes, it's malicious. It's been marked here as malicious. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. I did not expect this. This thing has actually got remote access. It's got spyware. It's got persistence. It's got all kinds of stuff. It uses all kinds of evasions to get around things. And it includes a lot of files and contacts, 11 domains and nine hosts. This thing is crazy. Have a look at this off to Russia, United States, on the Tor network. It's gone everywhere. And the more I look at it, the more complicated this thing is. It's using a lot of HTTPS, uh, transmitting actually one over there is port 80. Um, it's doing a lot of network traffic. All right, as we scroll down through this, we can actually see that there's 18 different pointers here that point to this being malicious. Everything from the way it executes through the privilege escalation, the defensiveness, everything it does. So hybrid analysis has given us a lot of information, a lot more than I actually expected. This jar file is doing an awful lot. Now I can dig down into each one of these. Um, all I'm going to do though is I'm going to click the little down arrow next to this one here into reverse engineering maybe um, and dig through and see what it actually does. Now something that is of a lot of interest is the network related HTTP, HTTPS traffic. I'm wondering what it's sending here. Uh, I dare say it's a downloader and it's downloading more executables and more scripts. Um, as we go down, we can see it gets all sorts of remote access, uses WMI and things like that. Um, as we're scrolling further down, and we've got all sorts of text files it drops, lots of VBS files, lots and lots of VBS files. And then you can see all of the runtime Java scripts and command lines that are running. You can see also all of the exceptions and things that it's trying to access. You can see what it's trying to access here as well, as far as time and work out if you're a valid machine or not. You can also see the domains of contacts. You can see all the VBS files it launches. Check out all those VBS files from the temp directory. Wow, this thing is doing a heck of a lot. If you come down here, you can see all sorts of command lines and Javas and wow, there's so much going on. This Java is absolutely crazy. This is doing a lot of work. Here we've got all these VBS files. There's also an executable in amongst there as well. And as we scroll down, we can actually have a look at the screenshots that pop up as well. Uh, looks like they've got a bit of an error there. One of the Java files has thrown an error up on the screen. Um, we can flick through all the screenshots there. I just can't get over how many executables this thing is running. It's getting the registry and attributes and I cackles and running VBS scripts and X copies and wow this thing is going absolutely crazy on my machine when I run this. And the network analysis is crazy as well. Again as I said before off to Russia, off to the United States. Um, you can actually drill down and have a look at all the different domains that are owned by whoever and what is actually contacting. So there we go, we've got uh, an obfuscated domain there that's trying to contact. This thing is going nuts. I did not expect this when I opened this Java up. Look at the way it's crossing the globe. Wow. It contains all kinds of interesting strings as well. Um, as you scroll to the bottom, you can drill down on the individual strings and have a look at what they are. I'm looking for strings that might be web addresses, that kind of thing, but you can already see them above. Then you've got all the individual VBS files that get spat out or pulled down and downloaded. Um, each one of these could do a myriad of different things, really. Um, as we scroll down, there's just VBS, 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 and an executable. Some class files here. So this one jar file is popping all this stuff out. And there's, of course, there's some text files that it dumps down as well. Um, and even an ID.txt, a whole bunch of things, really. And then we've got all of the uh, process identifications all the IDs of all the processes that are running there's a lot of them there not at all as I expected all from double clicking one jar file 
so highly likely this is downloading Trojans and installing Trojans and backdoors and all kinds of things and needless to say your machine won't be healthy now back on this detection if you grab some of these names some of the more obscure names and Google them you can then obviously find out from Google what other people can say that they do so this one is a Trojan so it obviously downloads something or does something you don't want it to be doing um, the more you dig around using the names on VirusTotal the more information you'll find out um, now if we go we can look at the downloads I can download the uh, PCAP file so I can do a Wireshark and have a look at what's in there and I can download the original sample and I can also download all the VBS files and have a look inside them so that's what I'm going to do now I'm just going to scroll up till I find them scrolling up so the class file oh, I don't really yeah I'll download that as well I guess what I'm really after is to have a look inside that VBS code to see what that gets up to so there's DLL files here there's an executable file um, there's a whole heap of stuff going on here there's one above just here called hacktoolvbs.agent that looks interesting so let's just download a whole bunch of these VBS files shall we just save them to my hard drive I'll extract them out in a moment so what we have so far is a jar file which is really a container of classes in amongst those classes are scripts to download more VBS files an exe file and a whole bunch of other stuff and here's the inside of one of those VBS files now obviously it plays around with the firewall so we're just going to download, just going to go through them all download them all as much as I can offline so I can play with it in my little uh, demilitarized zone here just download that one as well and as we go we just keep downloading I don't think I've quite seen such a complicated virus before that uses so many different technologies executables and VBS files and Java files and JAR and all the rest of it right so I've got all that down on my hard drive now so I can now go and play with that and have a bit of a poke around and see what some of those things do so back into my Java decompiler um, just again just going to have a look and see if I can find some things it's doing um, here we go we've got a URL call here so it's pulling down something from a URL which we now know what that is because hybrid analysis has done the hard work for us no need for us to go through and pull this apart we can in this compiler click through and go to the subroutines and things like that and find out more information um, but really we don't need to dig too deep because hybrid analysis has done it and here we go we've got the VBS file so this one's looking for antivirus product this one's looking for the firewall this one again antivirus and another one antivirus so basically I think the uh, VBS scripts are just there to make sure firewalls are off or rules are created and to make sure that um, all of the antiviruses are turned off and that's pretty much it so that one jar file has managed to pretty much have its way with my computer um, as you can see you can also pull apart jar files just the same as I have and you can dig in there and find out what they get up to so jar yet another technology that can be used alongside executables and VBS and SCR files and DLLs to infect your machine thanks for your time You have any tips for me? You got something you like pulled apart? Maybe you don't like my style? Drop a comment. Ring the bell. See the next video. Or subscribe. Thanks. Bye.